I'm Judge Faith Jenkins, and this is Divorce Court. All kinds of couples with problems come to me for advice. Can I be in a relationship with someone that I really don't trust? Trust is lost in buckets and gained in drops. Others need a lighter touch. It's only been three years. You've been back together seven hours and 12 minutes. I hope you can make it to dinner. But most people just need some of my tough love. You're problematic on many levels. You know nothing about commitment, monogamy, integrity, and loyalty. Now, join me in divorce court for today's case. She says their relationship hit rock bottom after she found a condom under their bed. But he says not so fast. Not everything is what it seems. Is it too little too late for this couple? That's today's case on Divorce Court. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, as you know, we have a virtual audience and it's filled with your super fans. Today's super fan of the day is Diane from Hatboro, Pennsylvania. Diane, welcome to Divorce Court. We're so happy to have you with us. Your Honor, this is the case of Leopold versus Itzen. Thank you, Juan. Sharice Leopold? Yes, Your Honor. You have brought Mr. Randy Itzen... Yes, Your Honor. ...to divorce court today. I understand the two of you have been in a relationship for the last two years. You are making a decision on your next steps, whether to proceed forward in marriage or if you can't resolve your issues, go your separate ways. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you also have a witness with you today, sir. Yes. Mr. Malachi Waco? Yes, that's Okay, correct. thank you for being here. I'll hear from you shortly. Thank you. Okay, so why don't we start with you, Ms. Leopold. Give me some background and tell me how the two of you met. So, we met on a dating app, and we were FaceTiming for a while, and we had a really sweet date. We met at Fat Burger. Mm. <laughs> Sounds funny. He picked me up, and because he's taller, and he twirled me around, and we kissed, and then we were in the drive-through, and actually we got the food and had the milkshake, and we were making out. So the guy had to come to the window and knock on it and say, "Hey, excuse me, your food is ready." Mm -hmm. So it was very, it was such a sweet. Like we'll always remember that, and we tell the story to friends all the time. So it started at Fat Burger, and it was all uphill from there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> okay. No, um, really, the truth is that I love Randy, and we've known each other for a long time. We've been, you know, trying for a long time, work, trying to work it out, and it's just not working. Mm -hmm. um, I think that he needs to be more caring, more sensitive, more loving. He has anger issues, mm -hmm. and there are there's a lot of uh, baggage that I think he needs to work on before he can actually get into a serious relationship. Okay. Well, the two of you have been serious for the last couple of years. What do you have to say about that, Mr. Itson? Uh, that, that is a dang lie. I mean, she's the one that has the baggage. She's the one that had the anger issues, not me. You I, have baggage, too. She will always wants to manipulate me. She always wants to have, you know, uh, more of a control over me. Mm -hmm. And so, but the thing is, she's the one that has, like, the baggage. Mm -hmm. She's the one that has the issues. Me, I'm always, like, very chill. Mm -hmm. I don't really care about much things, whatever, but she always wants to bring up problems and such. That's understandable. You know, you talk about this great romantic first date. The sparks flew immediately, mm -hmm. but then you say shortly after that, things started going downhill. Tell me about the issues that you say you've been having. Well, one of the issues is he flirts with many women. He's a bartender. I'm not, exactly, I'm a bartender, so but I'm no, not But no, but besides that, <laughs> we went out one night and we were hanging out, we were drinking, of course, and um, he saw another woman at the bar. She looked lonely, and he's a very friendly guy, very outgoing, that's why I love him. But, um, so he's like, you know, she looks a little lonely, I'm gonna buy her a drink. He went without me. And so I was just hanging out, waiting, because I thought that was awkward. And he goes and buys her a drink, cause, just being friendly. And in my mind, I'm like, yeah, okay, you're being friendly in your head. But for her, she doesn't know that you just are being friendly. She thinks you're flirting with her. Mm -hmm. And he probably didn't even say he had a girlfriend. Ooh. I totally did. I mentioned her. I did tell her about the other girlfriend, that. too. Yes, I did. <laughs> so you're saying that the two of you branch off and talk to other strangers while you're together? On a, on a date at Some, a bar? Sometimes. I mean, sometimes. people talk to us because okay. we're interesting. They, they just come up to us and start talking to us about, like, hey, what do you guys do? Have I seen you? Mm -hmm. Some people think we're famous. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But people start talking to us. Yeah. Uh, but, but you know, like, it, it's, it's pretty standard flirting, I would say, when, when someone buys, when, when a guy offers, approaches a woman mm -hmm. who's mm -hmm. by herself at a bar and buys her a drink. 
Yeah. That's like the 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 key sign that there's interest there and you kind of want to talk to her and get to know her and figure out who she is. Yeah, true. But, I mean, for me yes. being a bartender for six years, I have seen, you know, many guys like this. And, then, and the thing is, like, not everyone has, like, an notorious motive. Like, oh, just because I buy you a drink, I want you in my bed, like, right afterwards. But you weren't <laughs> a bartender that night, right? You were no, on a date. No, I was not. But the thing is, it's like she keeps talking about me, like, flirting with other mm -hmm. people. And then, and then um, not only is that, too, she will also mention, too, like, almost every time when I come home from work, she would be like, oh, so how many girls hit on you? I'm like, why does that matter? I don't care about... On this particular issue, mm -hmm. on its face, mm -hmm. it looks like you were flirting with somebody else. That's what people do when they want to flirt at bars. They go and they buy a single woman a drink. Yes. You know that you're a bartender. You weren't working that night, though. No, you were out on a date. Let, let's move forward here, because I know there are some bigger issues yes. besides the flirting. But you say, I, want to, I do want to hear from you on this, because you said one of your issues is you are a bartender, and you feel like she is really insecure about your job Definitely. and what you do. Yes, she's think, I'm, she thinks that I'm flirting with my customers. I'm just trying to make money, mm -hmm. you know, for her. So if I don't see people, I see money. It is part of the job. It is part exactly. of the job. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have been a server in the past, so I know uh, people do give numbers and they want to see if you want to go on a date or do something. Mm. So I know how it is. That's why I, I'm a little insecure, because I know. But it's not about getting phone numbers or someone gives you the number. It's if the person who's receiving the number does anything with it, right? True. Are you saying he's doing something with the I phone I don't numbers? know. That's the thing. And you I, don't know? Yeah. I don't know. But, but he's not. saying he's not. You don't believe him? Not real. Not... So, you, so there's a trust issue. For sure, there's a trust issue. I found a condom under the bed. I was livid. I was shocked. We don't use condoms. I'm thinking that she planted something like this just to start something. I understand you brought a witness who's going to clear some of this up. Do you know anything about the evidence that was found? a condom under the bed. Um, he, I? I was livid. I was shocked. I, I didn't know what to do. I was shaking because we don't use condoms. So I was like, that's not mine. That is not ours. And this was at your, the place that you're living? Yes. Your apartment, your home? We did have friends stay with us okay. a couple times, like a couple guys. And did so, you ask him about it? Yes. Oh, yeah. No, well, I, just, I didn't ask him. I said, what's this? And I was shaking. And he's like, I am so sorry. I don't know what that is. And he denied everything. Yes, and then that's when. not true. Well, I mean, then first he turned it around on me and said, I planted it there. Mm -hmm. And so then once he realized I was telling the truth, he, I, I said, like, maybe one of our, could it be one of our friends that stayed? And he said, yeah, but yeah, it actually, like, because yeah. two of the guys had women over. And so I don't know. But, yeah. I but don't, you, I don't, ho ho hold yeah. on one second. They had, you're saying that he denied it. He yes. said it wasn't his. Yeah. And you still didn't believe him? You still had questions? Yeah, I mean, because I will say in the past, that's how I found out, and other ex who did admit it, that's how I found out he cheated, because I found a condom wrapper on the ground. Okay, so you're still... So that's in the back of your mind yeah. when this happens. Yeah, for sure, because that happened recently. Because that's a pretty big accusation. If, if you believe that you were with someone who would disrespect you to that level, to have someone else in your home, in your bed, that's pretty significant. Definitely. And it's, it's also significant that you've now had a situation, a, a condom gate situation, twice. And the thing is, since that Cherie loves to argue, I'm thinking that she planted something like this just to start something, to make it really? look bad. Mm -mm, you think it. that she would go to that extent to yes, start definitely. that kind of conflict? <laughs> yes, the two What woman yeah. would do that? You. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do something like that. Who is Definitely. your witness, sir? I understand you brought a witness who's going to clear some of this up yes. for me. Definitely. Mr. Mr. Malachi Wanko? Yes. Mm -hmm. Come on. <clears throat> I'm very interested to hear what you have to say, sir. Do you know anything about the evidence that was found in, in, in their apartment? Well, what I will say is uh, we came to visit uh, me and some other friends, and we hung out with Randy. We had, like, a guy's night out. We were riding around the town, bar hopping, and a few of the guys, we brought some girls back. And um, I didn't think much of it. And then Randy calls me Monday, and he's like, hey, uh, you know anything about a condom? Did you leave a wrapper, a condom wrapper under my bed? I'm like, uh, 
I didn't. I mean, I, know I took everything with me that I brought with me. They're homies. They could have totally decided this. I'll, I'll, I understand that they're friends, but I want to hear what he has to say, and then I'll make a decision as to whether he's being objective and unbiased yes, in his I testimony. Get, yes, Your Honor. He thinks that she planted it, and I know how she can be tripping sometimes, so I wouldn't put it past her. Um, okay, so you came all the way to court today to tell me you don't know who, who, who whose rapper it is either. <laughs> You... It's not mine, <laughs> and I know it wasn't. I Randy. appreciate you clearing everything up for us today in court, <laughs> sir. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, thank you. I don't like any of that. <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> there is another. I appreciate you breaking this case wide open for us today. <laughs> I popped up at his job. He lied to me. He said he was going to work. We woke up early. I go to his job to surprise him. He is not there. Did you tell her you were going to work today, but you didn't go to work? <laughs> yes. Lying to you was a better alternative than the truth. If I was to be honest with her, she would yell at me. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. There is another trust issue. We're talking about trust. I popped up at his job. He lied to me. He said he was going to work. We woke up early. And he even wanted me to pick up a suit for him because he was busy that day, supposedly, work all day. I go to his job to surprise him. He is not there. Mm. I talked to his coworker. She said, oh, no, he's not working now, but he comes in later at 5. And I called him, too, a bunch of times, and he didn't respond for, like, an hour. Mm -hmm. Then finally responded and said, hey, I'm sorry, I lied. I just wanted space from you to play video games or do whatever he wanted to do. But really, he was in the car with another woman, mm -hmm. and he said that was last minute. His friend called him because she's having boyfriend troubles mm -hmm. and wanted to talk to him, another guy. Mm -hmm. You know, when women have troubles with other men, they want to talk to another man. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know what to believe there, too, because... Did you know I'll... who she was? Is she no, a friend I don't of yours, know her, too? But okay. He, he, no, I don't know her at all. Did you tell her you were going to work the day, but you didn't go to work? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. So What's the reason that? why that I lied to her is because of, um... Usually, I, I want some space, you know, that she wants me to be around her 24-7. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, it's like, we live together, we're going through the COVID. You know, I need some space, so mm -hmm. I wanted to go to the gym, and I also wanted to, you know, just to do my own thing for a little bit. Okay. But if I was to tell her that, she would start to flip out. So you said that lying uh -huh. to you was a better alternative than the truth. Yes, definitely. Because mm -hmm. if I was to be honest with her, she would yell at me. And how did that work out for you that day? So as, as I was um, about to head, you know, for me to go do my own things, whatever, I uh, have a friend of mine, she called me, mm -hmm. and then uh, she needed help. You know, so that's the reason why I was going to help her out really fast and then continue to do what I was going to do. So, just a friend? Yes, definitely. It's just a friend. I have no, no interest in her like that. Mm -hmm. With anyone, mm -hmm. actually. But even though Cherie, she keeps on um, have accusing of me uh, cheating because of her previous relationships. When you say, so you feel like she's comparing you to her past experiences? Definitely. Mr. Edson, what do the two of you have in common? We're outgoing. We want a family. We want kids. In your mind, what do the two of you have in common? What's the commonalities in this relationship? The core values that you find that the two of you see eye to eye on? We see the good in people. Mm -hmm. We love to socialize. Like he said, we're very outgoing. Um, we love to, we're spontaneous. Mm -hmm. We love to do fun things, take trips together. Um, we're into the same music and mm -hmm. um, into the same movie. Like we watch all the same stuff and we're into the same comedy, you know. Um, Normal. I think that's... I think it's good that the two of you see the good in other people. I don't know that you see it in each other. And that's Sometimes. the problem. Mm. Because I'm gonna tell... You know, people say all the time, you know, opposites attract. Mm -hmm. They may attract, but that doesn't mean that they're able to stay in long-term relationships. Because at some point, in order for you to do day-to-day -to -day life together, you really have to have a similar set of core values. For you, I believe what he says about you comparing him to your past experiences. And because, you know, as we get older, when it, it, it's harder to fall in love and trust because we've experienced heartbreak. Mm -hmm. And it can poison your perspective. Oh, yeah. So at some point, you've got to decide to, 
you know, release all of that stuff from the past and not continue to carry it forward because it's just going to hurt every relationship and continue to perpetuate itself in your life until you're really able to let it go. Yes, yeah. And for you, sir, because, and I know there's an age difference, you're 30 years old, and, you know, you're with someone who is on high alert. Yes, definitely. For any type of wrongdoing mm -hmm. that could potentially be happening, because mm -hmm. she wants to catch it before it happens, it's a way for her to protect herself from being hurt again. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're dancing this tightrope a little bit. You, you can't lie about going to work, and, and that's where the two of you have to think about the communication because you need to be in a relationship where you can speak your truth. Definitely. And if your truth is, mm -hmm. I need a day, because that's okay. Because at the end of the day, you're supposed to be on the same team. Mm -hmm. And you want, you want what's best for the team. Mm -hmm. And if one of your teammates wants a day to a mental health break with everything else going on in the world, mm -hmm. you support that. You need to understand that. You're suing for $366. Yes, well, that was because uh, also he's financially irresponsible mm -hmm. in a way. I know he's younger, and that, to, like, I know as an older woman, like, you know, and I've been making more, and especially COVID happened, and so I've just been providing more, but I was supposed to go on this, like, girls' weekend getaway trip. It was, like, last minute, and, and he was supposed, you know, I was expecting half the rent from him, and all of a sudden, last minute, he's like, I can't come up with that. And more and more, I've been having to pay more, and I had to cancel the girls' yeah. trip. I mean, mm -hmm. I really wanted to, he knew I wanted to go on that so bad. And he well, was- Ms. Leopold, you're suing for the wrong thing. I mean, <laughs> he's, not, he's not responsible for paying for your trip. Yes. It's but, just that I had my rent. I was expecting to pay more, like, out of my pocket yes. for this trip for my birthday, and then he didn't even do anything for me. It was because uh, there was a problem with my, with my, um, with my payroll, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so have I told her that have I will pay, like, the late fee. Mm -hmm. I just can't, I just can't but do it. But he never did anything mm -hmm. for me. I, well, so I, I mean, you things. know, I, I think there are some good times in, in your relationship, mm -hmm. but I think over time it's, it's revealed itself to both of you that there are a lot of things that you don't see eye to eye on. Mm -hmm. And so now you've learned there's much more to your relationship than meeting at Fat Burger and twirling her around and, and landing your first kiss through the drive through mm -hmm. right? It's so yeah. easy to fall in love, but it takes work to stay there. Yeah. And, and the work that it takes to stay there, it involves trust. One, it involves communication, that's number two, and it involves respecting each other's boundaries, that's the third. I'm going to dismiss your lawsuit because I'm not going to order him to pay for half of your girl's trip. Had you sued for the rent, that'd mm -hmm. be a different story here. Got it. Um, Thank you. But the bigger issues, those three things in your relationship, and then you've added a fourth at the last minute, which are the financial issues. Mm -hmm. So at some point, you know, you, you it, stop bending over backward to try to make someone fit this mold that you want them to fit in in your life. And it's so much easier when you j choose someone mm -hmm. that, you can, that you can really relate to and connect with once you've worked out your own baggage. Mm -hmm. yes. My judgment for the two of you, I have an aftercare specialist on standby to talk to, talk to you. Okay. If there's any chance that the two of you are going to work, it's going to take, I think, the, uh, a professional sitting down and talking to the two of you about, about how you can navigate some of the issues that have come up in court today. Okay, hmm. I understand. You both seem like nice people, and yeah. I, I do wish you well. Thanks, Your Honor. Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. The best piece of advice I thought Judge Faith gave us was that if we're gonna continue our relationship, we need to have a professional involved. No matter what, do not lie. So. I'm going to keep that in mind. I'm going to be honest. I'm never going to be able to move on and be happy if I don't stop comparing him to my other exes. I love you so much, and I'm going to do better to try to make this work. Oh, I promise I'm going to do better, too. I mm -hmm. want us to work. I really do. <laughs>